All right, so that's the record button instead of the, the, the streaming button. So, we have another special episode, not an episode, because an episode would have a lot of cursing in it. A special episode of Hero School. <laughs> we again follow our intrepid young hero, El Pantera, who has just awoken to get back in action. El Pantera, uh, where are you now that you've captured this vile and evil draconic creature? Well, once we make sure that it's, you know, not going to escape again. I'm, a, I'm suggesting some sturdy cages and maybe keeping the manacles on. Yeah, it'd probably be a best idea to keep the manacles, the, the dozens upon dozens of manacles and heavy rope he has tied uh, on him. Uh, it's probably a good idea to keep it. Yeah, sounds like a solid plan. Since he doesn't seem to be doing anything but struggling. Like, there's no end. So just find a cage, put him in the cage. Um, we've got one somewhere, right? I, I yeah, yeah. The there's, there's a. I mean, if you, if you go, if not, I'm just gonna be having him like overhead until we figure out where, where we're going. You could, uh, uh, there wouldn't really be a cage, but uh, like there's a, there's an office in the the local money lenders that's behind some bars. Should probably leave a note. The, the Wait, no how sturdy are the walls? Remember, the only prison in the whole of this giant metropolis was the dungeon in Dalton Castle. And that got blowed up. Yeah, that that's why they had all those people in that one space. It was the only place they had for them. Does the does the money lender have a safe? Um, well, yeah, of course the money lender would have a safe. Um, are you trying to like work something out with the lo local money lender? Yeah. Ugh. It's just I don't know where to put this thing. Why did you save it? <clears throat> put it away from. Put it away from here. We don't have anywhere else to put it. Put it in the water! It's probably a bad idea. <coughs> and Sibber, then Sibber says, You know, my mom might be able to keep it. Is your mother here? Uh, no. Good! Go take it to her. That's the voice of the money lender, by the way. I gathered that. <laughs> just, just look, turns around and look at Saber. Where is your mother? Uh, Twilight Forest. The what? Twilight Forest. Where's that? Uh, it's another realm. Oh. But she usually keeps my eye on me. And, and we might be able to like like ask her and she might and then she'll keep my dragon for me uh ask her isn't she in a didn't you just say she's in another realm yeah ask her how uh mom mom you there <laughs> Saber's looking around Sam was a fairy it? godchild, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, jeez. You're like calling for your mom. Your mama. Uh, hmm. Let me break out some dice. Because you could summon some of the skills and powers for which your mama had hooked you up with. But. 
Are you a mama's boy? Does she have you? Is, is, are you her spoiled little brat? Not like somebody. Are you? Are you her spoiled little? Let's find out. But you know for one thing, Saber is not a spoiled brat. All right. So you're calling out <clears throat> for your mom, and you just hear. And Saber looks all around him. Oh! And he's looking, he's looking around, looking for where this psst is coming from. All right, it's just coming from a, a dark corner where there doesn't oh. seem to be anybody. There you are! Is it his mom or is it somebody else? Oh, it's somebody else. Oh! And which one is this? It's, uh... You see just a small fairy? She's waving you over. Oh, hi! It's, uh... This is, uh... She's tapping her foot on the floor, uh, waiting to be introduced. Uh, um, so many fairies. Uh, this is, uh... Tinkle Spirit, that's it! You said what? Tinkle Spirit. Tinkle Spirit? Yeah. She rolls her eyes. Um, tinkle Spirit, wow. She rolls her eyes and just says, Twinkle! Twinkle! How oh, many times? Oh, twinkle Spirit! Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Where's my mom? She's busy. She's oh. always busy. You know she's well, always busy. She has a lot of time. Twinkle. Yes. Twinkle, Luke. Twinkle spirit. Luke. Not tinkle. Oh, not twinkle. Oh. Not tinkle spirit. Twinkle spirit. And she's like getting flustered oh. and frustrated. I came here because your mom sent me to come and talk to you. You can't even get my name. How many times do I have to tell you? You know your mom is busy. I'm busy too. We always get things to do. And we come all the way across. You know how hard it is to get here? And it smells here. What's the smell? Oh my god, what's that? And she, uh, That's a just, dragon, old girl. Just notices the creature. Hey, listen. This is my new dragon, old girl, Pat. We have to keep it safe. And I'm wondering if mom can take it away. And or you can take it away and keep it safe and look after him. Is he trained? Oh, don't, he tried to attack us. He tried to attack us. He, he what? He tried to attack us. He tried to attack us. How many you tried to attack? How is your pet if you tried to attack us? It can't be your pet if you tried to attack us. What do you mean he tried to attack you? Are you his master or somebody else's master? Is he your... No, is he not? He's not your pet. He's not your pet. He's his pet. Because he has him. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Don't be my pet. Don't. Okay, okay. Yeah. Better get down now. M mister, 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 um, um, Mr. Masky Face? That's what? El Pantera. Uh, El, El Pantera. El Pantera. <clears throat> <clears throat> El Panther, I am. She pauses, like winces as she slowly turns her head to a uh, saber. Twinkle spirit, and then turns back to face El Pantera. That is a very scary pet you have there. And yeah. I don't know if Saber is ready for a pet. Oh, yeah. he, he seems determined. Did he tell you about his pet twig, Willow? No. Admittedly, we only met about 15 minutes ago. Oh my gosh. You know what he did to Twig Willow? Oh. He hasn't had a pet since then. Just turns to Saber. What's a Twig Willow? It's a, it's a large, like, it's like a, it's like a Twig Willow. He was like a large lizard, and he had big horns, and he was really big, like big, really big. And then, like, oh, wait, wait. you know those? Is uh, it? It was a tarasque. That's what it was. Um, mom was. Mom said 
better look after him. But, you know, he went off. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a baby. He was big. He was this many. And she kind of like starts fluttering her wings up. She's tiny, right? So she flies up triple her size, which is just a little bit above Saber. And goes, he was this many high. All right, it was a little Tarask. One of those little ones. That's not little. Huge. That's huge. Look at that. It's so high. Um, but uh, I didn't look up for my It was still bigger than you. Is but no this one is going to... Yeah. Is no one going to address the fact that this kid just summoned a fucking fairy? I have so many questions right now. That's not even in the top five. <laughs> she, like, she's floating, and she, like, makes, like, she's stomping her foot on the floor. Um, and then there's, like, a puff of fairy dust underneath her foot as if she hit something. And she goes, he did not summon me! His mom did. Oh, this guy's Fizzle Fart! Hello, Fizzle Fart! I'm Twinkle Spirit! My name is not Fizzle Fart. <laughs> I sense the dark side within you! <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I thought I got mad when someone got my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we have... Oh, Al Pantera, Fizzle Fart, and you. Oh, please, I'm sorry. Don't do that. Um, on another note, I don't know what to do with this thing. Is he a potty train? I have no idea. Is it? And he super looks at Alpantara. I don't know. It's still like rising around. Listen, listen. I'm oh, fairly certain it ate that Yeti. It's my new pet. A mom will know what to do with it. It is Yeti. It, it might. I don't we, know. We, we don't have. We don't. We don't really have um a lot of Yetis in the. We don't. I don't have any Yetis. I don't know. He's going. He, um, does he have anything else but Yetis? We don't have Yetis. Just, we don't. I don't know. You need something else. We have berries. We have lots of berries. They're good. Don't think you need berries. She, like, flutters, like, uh, without a care towards, uh, towards the, the draconic creature. And, um, she goes... Hey, she starts poking at its face with her finger, even though like he's got the the manacles and the rope and everything muzzling him up. He's like, Urgh. she's hey, hey, no, you don't eat fairies, but do you eat berries? This sounds similar, but they're not the same because fairies have wings and berries don't have wings. I hey, can't tell she starts poking at it again. It's like rrr, 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 rrr. she's getting nowhere, but she looks like she's getting frustrated trying to get an answer. I don't think you're gonna get a whole lot of talking out of it. I don't think he speaks the uh, you know dragon talk. She goes. I don't think he speaks at all. Oh. Um. Ahem. And then she. She opens her mouth, but that voice doesn't come out. You just hear... <laughs> what language is she speaking? She's speaking uh, lesser draconic. I know that language. In a draconic voice. Okay, maybe not that one. Like, her voice just became an actual, like, draconic voice. Um, so she's speaking lesser draconic. And she goes, oh, well, I know I, I can speak to you like this. Do you, do you eat berries? Because we don't have yetis. And yetis are kind of nice. And we don't want to feed you yetis because they're nice. But we have a lot of berries. We can feed you a lot of berries. And they're very good. And uh, the creature just starts... <laughs> which is incoherent. So he doesn't know it? He's just... She goes... She looks at you. I, I'll ask again. <sighs> <laughs> she waits. And he's just like. Well, I mean, considering we have we have his mouth kind of tied shut, don't know if there's a lot of talking going on there. She looks over, smacks herself in the head. Oh! And then she starts floating around, 
trying to see where to, to unlash it from. She starts pulling at it. Don't untie his mouth. How else is he going to talk? She starts pulling. He's a criminal. <laughs> and pulling. He's a I thought he was a pet. <laughs> you can't be a pet and a criminal. It's criminal how you're treating your pet. And she grabs at the chain again. And she's trying to like, um, she, because you have a couple of chains. So the one she's grabbing at, you just hear like a, a, a shift, a click. And then the rope you have around his, his uh, mouth seems to get cut and like splay open. I'm just going to basically jump on him and grab him by the neck. She goes, oh, oh, good idea. Hold him still. And then she starts pulling at the at the uh, the the chain again. Come on! I spin man. my gun out and put it to his head. <laughs> she stops for a second and looks at you. And goes, "Oh, you're not nice." Fizzle fart! Don't put it, put that away. Fizzle spark. Fizzle. She she like scrunches up her face and slowly turns her head to face uh, saber. <laughs> Fizzle spark. Huh. <laughs> I'm just going to turn and face Fizzle Spark and speak in no mish. I think I can understand what this thing says. We're going to have to open it up. And um, she, she she turns back to look at Fizzle Spark, and she grins and just starts nodding her head. Mm -hmm. Fine. He, he spins the gun, lets the hammer down, spins it into his holster, pulls out a knife, and cuts the rope off. <laughs> All right. So you help her like get rid of everything that's on um that's yeah. on his face. All right. Well, of course. Yeah. Go ahead. Zipper says that is completely and utterly a great idea. Roll a, roll a d20, and and uh, just let me know if you get a four or less. Oh, nice. Awesome. You don't need both hands, right? You got a four or less? Roll the four. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you don't need both hands, right? Let, let, let me just tab over and let you know how much damage you just took. Uh, the answer is no. Yeah, the answer is no. That's... I don't know, he's not that powerful. He's this powerful. All right. What is that? Uh, that divided... I would roll a fucking four. Take, um... <laughs> like, ten points of damage to your hand as he latches on? Actually, I take none as his mouth just closes and I pull my hand out. What? What do you mean you Spectre. take none? He goes right through me. Oh, he goes through you? All right. Yep. So he bites you, and before, like, his hand doesn't even open as you, you yoink it back. And as you yoinking your, your hand back, she slaps him on the nose. The fairy slaps him on the nose. Hey! Just trying to talk to you so and that you can be my pet. Everyone did see my arm go intangible, though. <laughs> Neighbor's just focused on his pet, so I have more questions than answers at the moment. So she says, "Hey, don't bite the ghost." Now can you talk and talk to Twinkle Spirit? So he, the uh, the creature's still like, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, snap, snap, snapping his jaw wildly, trying to get whoever. Um, so Fizzle Spirit goes. <sighs> you know, again with that deep guttural draconic voice. Um, and there's like there's roaring and like it sounds like a, a a shouting match between dragons. And she keeps scrunching up her face and stomping her foot and like like slamming her fist into her uh you know into her waist. You're like, huh? So it's spoken like draconic, so I can't understand it. Um, no, no, no. You can understand it. There's some parts you can't understand. Right? You could assume that it's greater draconic. Um, but she she's constantly looking upset. She's constantly repeating herself over and over and over. 
And then she gets upset. She goes, why don't you just talk to me already? And look, less so draconic. Until eventually, um, she turns to, to you, El Pantera, and goes, I don't think he knows how to talk. So we have to train him! Um, El Pantera, can you roll me a d20? All right. And let me know if you get uh, 16 or higher. 18. An 18 on the die? Yep. All right. Um, finally... The creature says something coherent, but it's in common. And he roars out, Give me my heart! Okay. How did you lose a heart? I lost hearts. I can make some out of paper. Will that be okay? And he goes back to snapping. Snapping his jaws, writhing just insanely without rhyme or reason. So? Uh, I'm afraid this thing is non communicative. It's a simple beast. It must be put down. No! She already, uh, oh, uh, Twinkle Spirit turns to us. He's already on the floor! <sighs> No. Mom will Put know down. What to do with him. It's too Twinkle dangerous Spade. to let live. Twinkle Spade. Mom will know what to do with him. Can't just let my dragon ogre die. But she's busy. And if I bring him home, if, if I bring him home, I'm going to have to watch him and feed him and clean up after him. Can't you, can't you ask? Can't you ask Pin Blossom? <gasps> Don't make me ask Pin Blossom. Oh, you look like a work of animals. She she starts looking over her shoulder. You remember what happened last time? Yeah. Can you want to ask me to ask Pin Blossom to ask? Either you ask this Pin Blossom character, or we have to kill it. No! <laughs> Twinkle Spirit, he's gonna kill my other dragon! She, she like, stands up straight, right? Starts rolling her eyes up towards the ceiling, avoiding anyone else's gaze. And she's still, like, fluttering up in the sky. But she puts her hands behind her back, just behind her waist. And, like, makes that casual, like, I'm walking away. I don't see anything. Walk. And as she's stepping, there's little sparks of fairy dust beneath her feet. You know, as if she was actually on some form of floor. And then she starts walking towards the shadow. And then, like, she gets four or five of her tiny little paces away before you hear her whistle. Honestly, I'd face palm right now if I wasn't resting a goddamn dragon. <laughs> Sorry, kid. Uh, and, uh, you start, you see this, you hear this uh, s song, this perf perfect sounded song coming out of his mouth, and he's starting to speak to uh, play kid Twinkle Spirit in Faye. Oh, okay. Does anybody understand Faye? Give me a sec. <laughs> he has to look. Now Pantera's going for all the ancient languages. I have seven languages. Seven? Yes. Yes, I do know Faye. <laughs> so, hell, Pantera. Can oh, he's going. had some real cool sleep. Trust me. That coma I was in threw me for a See, what happened, <laughs> what happened was he actually got the sense knocked into him. You'd be like, you'd be like, hey, I know this shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so there's a, a conversation uh, that goes back and, and forward. And she's like, stop asking me. Oh, every time 
I, your mom sends me, and then you have some harebrained scheme, and we try to ask everyone else for help, and I'm always the one that gets the blame because you hide out here when I'm back home. It's always the same thing. Those puff loaves asking me to be a story catcher. I'm, I'm trying to be a story catcher. And she lets me to be a story catcher. Don't let me be a <clears throat> Well, let's get stories. And you're the only one who can help. Well, if you're catching stories. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> anyone that does it. Mind you, everyone else in the general vicinity, because I'm assuming you took them back uh, to one of the safe points so that you could chat with the money lender. Um, everyone else is kind of like stupefied. Like they're they're in like a huddled mass. Just like what is going on? Your stupefied faces actually make me comforted in the fact that I'm not hallucinating all this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because I have so many goddamn questions right now. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes, all right. She finally, uh, you know what? No, roll me a persuasion check. Awesome. <laughs> um, roll me a persuasion check. And she's like, no, 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 but roll with disadvantage. Oh, no. Can I aid because I could speak in the same language? Um, no, he well, has, he's, he, roll, he rolls with disadvantage. There's a reason for this. Now, you Can know. Can I just coup de gras this fucker and make it a moot point? Um, yeah. <laughs> if you want to go there. You've already made... Oh, no, no, no. Don't say if you want to go there, like, that's going to take an MA. You've literally taken out every other possibility, as far as I know at this point. Because I can understand that conversation. You can understand it? All right. I can't. Oh, and that's not my fault. Yes. I'm not the one who decided to talk in fact. So go ahead, Brian. Let me know what you get. All right. Uh, there's a 19 and there's a 16. Uh, That's on the... A, so. a, what the hell are you rolling with? Uh, you have a 21 and I got it. All right. 19. So <laughs> you know that it's that she's going to take... She agrees to take uh, this creature, but she says if she takes it, it's going to be her pet. And she'll let you play with him once he's housebroken. And, and uh, he's, he's, he's looking, <laughs> Saber's looking to her. Then the Alpantera, and then the her, and then the floor, and then the Alpantera, then the her. Okay. And go to sleep. She goes, no, I'm, I'm not gonna. He's gonna walk. We have to put, we have to put rope back on. She sighs. She goes and gets the rope that was cut off, and just starts flying to his face. As he's, you know, going to sleep. But she's very... I'm not going to say care less, but she's carefree about it. Like she's behaving like he's kind of no danger. It's going to be my pet. Oh. She's, she's like... Meh. She turns around, sticks her tongue at you and does a little eye thing. Uh. <laughs> Tears are welling up in Sivir's eyes. And as you're trying to put it to sleep, she's like slapping you at the back of the head. She's not doing any damage, um, El Pantera. She's like, stop it. Stop it. He's mine now, right? He's... Stop it. You want to get eaten? She's like, come on. Come on, stupid. <laughs> she she names the creature stupid. Don't call him Stupid. That's his name. Come on, stupid. His name is a dragon ogre. Come on, dragon ogre, stupid. Whose pet is he? Oh, you give him cool names. So it's snapping at her. And El Pantera, being that you're so close, 
you see it actually catches her like once or twice. Um, and then when she gets her hand back, she just slaps it on the nose. Until eventually, like, you know, she looks like she gets upset. And every time it attacks, you know, like, it, it lunges away from her and falls on its face. Um, and then it lunges and it hits its head against, like, a pole, a support, uh, you know, a wooden support beam. Um, and then she starts walking away as it's chasing her. And it trips and it falls. And it's just like all sorts of... All manner of inexplicable malady is now befalling this creature as it's trying to chase her. And they both walk into the shadows until they literally walk into the shadows. And they're they're both gone. Right. Damn it. She always does this to me. Took over. Took over Gibble Gobble. Took over Schnickle Snackle and took over Fitzwebble. Where the hell were you raised, kid? Twilight Forest. Is Ogami in the same room? Um, none of the actual heroes from Hero School are in the room right yeah. now. That's why everyone is in a huddled mass. Like, you guys are probably in, um, like, uh,. One of the larger uh, warehouses that, like, once stored, like, gunpowder and stuff. So it has, like, stone reinforcing on the walls with a wooden facing on the outside. Just in case, you know. But it's it's one of the best places they have. And, you know, they're, they're strewn throughout the city. Little spots that might be uh, defensible. And uh, just because, is that moneylender the same moneylender that Loki used? Um, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna walk, gonna go dust, dust my pants off, walk up to him. I'd like to make withdrawal. There's, he, like many of the others, they're kind of like leaned back, holding someone. Everyone is at least holding one partner. Some people are just arbitrarily holding each other in groups like like a group hug but it's far too sad to look like a group hug <laughs> the, the looks on their faces they're all drawn back their eyes are all like you know bulbous and open like Ugh! and he looks at you much in the in the same way oh. what just pulls out bang note Like to make withdrawal. I, 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 uh... Took care of the dragon problem. Uh, <clears throat> um, he lets go and he starts trying to, trying to professional himself up. You know, he's dusting off not dust, but obviously it, it's like a thing he goes through to try to make himself a little more secure in himself. Uh, yeah, uh, mm, mm, um, mm. and he's just pointing to the corner, like over and over. Hmm, uh, 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 okay. And he agrees. All right, I'm going to go collect the, how much money was it? I think it was like a thousand. Thousand one hundred or something. I, I split... I resplit up the gold because Elmer left. You have twelve hundred. Cool, twelve hundred gold. Yeah. What, what do you mean you resplit up the gold? You you did that. You did the banknotes before Elmer left. Yeah, but she left, so I I just just fucking. It's called you know, immersion. <laughs> Nelson, I don't have time to go back to Bert. Bert, I can't get back to Burtonville when the banks are actually in use, okay? <laughs> man. It's a role-playing game, man. He him fiat the shit. <laughs> he just controls Z the game. What the fudge? <laughs> Alright, so you you take the money. You just see the brownie with like some white out. <laughs> just The brownie doesn't even have white out. The brownie is putting a post-it note over the other number 
and a piece of uh of of brown tape, right? You know that 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 yellowish brown tape that sticks to damn near nothing and gets really hard if it's spo- exposed to the sun for any amount of time. Basking tape. Basking tape. He puts that over the initial number, and then s- over Aylmir's name on the script, and then slaps a post-it note under like how much each note is uh, really written for. That says, you know, 1,200 gold pieces. And then when we look back on the scene, El Pantera is walking away, counting his gold. Wow. You've got so much. Want some? Um, I, I would, but to be honest, I want to keep most of this on me. Because knowing the guy who procured it for me, I might have to give it back. Oh, okay. Just lost my pet. <laughs> hey, I didn't even know you can speak Fey. I can speak lots of languages. So can I. Useful, isn't it? I bet Fizzlefart can't speak them all. <laughs> anyway. We should probably go find Asira. Try to figure out. Oh, the grumpy she... girl? Yeah. You know, tell her what we're doing. If you want, you can be the leader. I'll let you. <laughs> all right. But you're not the leader because you have all these. And he's pointing up Fizzle. Fizzle spark. <laughs> I was gonna say the other one. You're not the leader because you have all these creatures in your beard. I don't have any creatures in my beard. No. Ew. You're alive. You're alive right now. They're watching us. They're scheming. They're gonna take over the world. That's what they're gonna do. They have geists inside of my body. You're in your beard. I can see them. You're a weird kid. And they have houses and everything. Did you, do your parents know that you were either kidnapped or rescued by fairies? Hmm? Have you even tried to find your, your birth parents? Because right now I'm leaning towards oh. kidnapped. Oh, my dad? My real dad? Oh, he's a fisherman. Oh. But my brother's a big troll. But he's in the Twilight Forest. And his name's Bill. But he's hilarious. Just sits there. Just says one thing. It's so funny. You <laughs> get George's face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you're you're searching for Desir, all right? Yeah, I'd figure I'd tell her that dragon was dealt with. Alright, um, you know, so... I mean, it takes it takes a while. Uh, again, it's mostly silent. There are, like, one or two shop owners or people that are just living, you know, in normal buildings that are like, I'll never leave my home, right? Um, that randomly scream at you, uh, uh, I'll never leave my home. Until eventually you see uh, Dasira, who at the moment is... Huh? Did you see that message, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, You see Dasira, she's dragging out like a couple of citizens. Like she has them by like the, uh, the, the waist, you know, like the waistband of their clothing. And she's like pulling them. And she's like, it's not safe. Took care of that dragon for you. And then she turns around. Dragon's been taken care of, kid. I don't know what you were so worried about. My mom's looking after it. She winces like she didn't notice Saber until he spoke. And then it looked yeah, like his voice. Yeah, he just popped out behind El Pantera. 
My mom's taking a nap. Okay. But there's there's still the threat of the other evildoers. That we don't even know they're, what they're doing right now. I yeah, think I know a way to find them. out, though. Yeah, about oh. those. Where's Vigo? He's helping with the evacuation. Oh, Vigo! I wish they hi to Vigo! Last time, when he was here, he made me a deputy! Yeah, we should probably go talk to the constable. Yeah, I should definitely go talk to Vigo. He's the one who sent for me. He'll be in the mayor's office at sundown. He'll only be there for an hour. Well, I think we only need a few minutes to be able to explain what we're doing. She goes, well, and then she's still trying to pull this uh, this guy by his, his waistband. She's like, come on, come on. But they said it was safe. It's okay. I, 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 you don't, you don't understand. I've lived here for the past thirty years. Alpentaris is going to casually walk up, just lift him overhead. Where to? You uh, can't make him leave. You realize that's kidnapping, right? Uh, Forceful that, evacuation. That's that's serious. Is mandatory evacu evacuation by order of the mayor. Oh well, then he pulls his pistol. Lawbreaker. Get to wherever they're trying to move you. <laughs> Why do you insist on aiming your gun at everything we're trying to negotiate with? <laughs> yeah, there's a fart. Stop shooting everybody. Dasira rolls her eyes. She goes, uh, everyone I meet. I, just come on, let's take him to the next closest evacuation point. Um, And she leads you guys to the closest one. Where you guys will like drop him off, and you know, there's people that know this guy. And he's like, I'm going back home, and they're like, No, no, don't. It's dangerous out there. And, you know, peer pressure keeps him from running away. Peer pressure, the best motivation. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna go to the you know travel to the mayor's office. Yep. Um, which actually like. When you get, you don't even get in sight of the mayor's office so much before you start feeling, like, all of you start feeling a little bit of a pressure in your chest. You know, like it's a pounding pressure. Like a weight is just, like the wind is just pounding on your chest, but there's no wind blowing. Um, and you get closer and closer until you eventually hear like a low, deep growl. And it seems to be going in time with that pressure you're feeling. And then when you're um, when you guys show your faces, uh, looking at the mayor's, um, you know, his home, his office, you see the the gigantic uh, Amarok, the old what, what? Amarok. Um, <laughs> I forget I, its I, name right now. I see his eyes just on the top of his head. And he's completely forgot about his ogre dragon. Oh, wow! And he runs towards it. Fizzle Spark just walks up. Hey, boy, how you doing? Reaches up and scratches it behind the ear. He's... <clears throat> you know, he's, he starts, like, motioning as, as gently as he can to push you towards the building. The second that, uh... The second Saber started running, it just take one step forward and then just, I'm just going to sit here and wait for this to play out. Hi, boy. Hi. Um, and the Amarok sort of does the same thing. Like, he nuzzles you to pick you up on his nose to, to just put you down next to the, the building. Oh. Oh. Oh, he doesn't want to talk to us. Think. Come on. You and I should take Fairy Kid to talk to the mayor. Probably a solid idea. I might want to tell him that we took care of a dragon problem. 
fairy kid, you might want to not talk. Why? Because it's annoying when you do. No, it's not. <laughs> I open the door and walk in. <laughs> um, you just, you know, the door's not locked. It's, it's his office. <clears throat> There's nobody there to greet you. Uh, but you can make a beeline to where his, you know, specific study um, is in this building. I would. I don't uh, know if they'd follow me or not. I mean, I don't know the layout of this place, so I'll follow you. And you guys, uh, you know, you walk through the, the door. Assuming Fizzle Spark is the first through. Fizzle Spark, yeah. you just hear a quick click, click. Buttons, then, put down the gun. He winces at you. You know, he, he lowers the gun to his side, pointing down towards the floor, but he, he leaves the hammer cocked. Bigelow Fizzle Spark, you don't remember me? Yes. Yeah. I remember a Bigelow. How do I know you're him? <laughs> well, shoot me. Shoot him! Shoot him! <laughs> he actually, uh, he, he, without hesitation, goes to shoot, and you just hear Mayor Buns, ah, ah, ahem! <laughs> and he's pointing it right at you. And looks at the mayor. Goes, I'll make sure. If, it, if it's him, ain't gonna be a problem. He's like, um, believe it's me. It's fine. It's fine. Let <laughs> him shoot me. Goes right through me and slams into the wall. <laughs> it, it does that. You know, splinters go flying. And he goes, Fizzle Spark! Also, he actually goes in for a hug. I hug him. Oh, hell, it's good to see an old face. It's good to see you. You don't know what mess has been going on here. Yeah, I got your... I'm assuming this is Bigo. Yes. Yeah, I got your letter, man. Oh, man, there's... It's a mess. Uh, found one of your kids. Some other kid. Don't know it, if he's one of yours or not. He looks out, he goes, Bigo! Saber! Oh, no! Ha, 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 ha. Come on in, come on. You guys are with Fizzle Spark. I know you're good. I'm just going to walk in behind them, just like more questions and answers. <laughs> he looks, uh, Vigo turns to you and snaps his fingers. Uh, you're that reckless one. Pantera. Yeah. Good to see you back up and about. Yeah, took care of that dragon problem for you. I helped. I helped, Figo. I got my mom to help. Um, when Strong Saber's... kid you got here, Long River. Good choice. Uh, You know, Vigo smirks. He goes, They ain't been doing half bad considering the circumstances. A bit headstrong. Not very cautious. Ah, uh, were we any cautious when we were younger? Um, he rubs his, like, his head back. Uh, I'm afraid that's a trap I might still fall down from time to time. Remember that time? We, uh, was you and me. We were just recruits. I can't, I can't get not one of the kids. Oh, that's right, that's right. Honestly, I would anyway. ask questions, but at this point, I've missed so many questions that I've had to ask so far. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so Vigo actually anyway, asked why'd you, anyway, why'd you need help from Akasha? Vigo sighs. Oh, man. We had, um, first of all, we was holding on to, uh, you know, her. And this is in, in regards to Senka Kraus. And 
not only that, there was a Miss Crane. A woman who apparently unwittingly had the power to rip a man's soul from his body. Well, that's dangerous. Yeah, well, that's why we let him know in Akasha. <laughs> and they sent me. Nice. <laughs> he just I got shrugs. more than one soul in my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. At least they sent somebody. Well, I guess if you're going to send somebody who can get his soul ripped out, you might want to send somebody with a couple spares. <laughs> he, he, he like giggles at that. <laughs> oh, humorous as always. Look, if you're going to be here, uh, Miss Crane is. She's gone. As far as I know, uh, I've been informed that she's been transported to Mitzelburg. Far out of the reach of the local evildoers. Yeah, um, about that. I don't know, because I don't know exactly what information you got on me, but uh, I managed to, let's just say, by my methods of gathering information, I found out that Belladonna and Sweet Tooth together as a pair are a very bad combination. Oh, okay. Um, one, good on you. I, I've been trying to extol the virtues of a bit of recon on, on your fellows as best I could. I'm proud of you, boy. But, uh, from what sources do you... You say that Belladonna and Sweet Tooth? According to Desira, the rest of my team left with Belladonna and Sweet Tooth. Yeah, I heard that. I wasn't very happy with it. But they're going to take him back to the Two Rivers. And judging by what a pushover he can be, I think your uh, your your classmates they know how to handle him. If he gets out of hand, I don't trust him. Well, neither do I. I don't trust much Miss Crane either. There was another thing I found out. You see, I got a little bit of insight into these guys, these uh, evildoers plan. And uh, let's just say it involved Belladonna centrally. Hmm. Makes sense. Well, I still had my wits about me. They were hitting Dalton Council pretty hard. You see, at this moment, Seaver is looking out of the window, looking at the Amarok. That's what he's doing at this time. You just see the Amarok sniffing around. So go ahead, Mike. Well, um, look, I know they were dropping off Sweet Tooth in the Two Rivers Forest. I say. We need to go back and find him. We got an evacuation to handle here, boy. That's why I'm not saying you. I'm saying me. Still headstrong, aren't you? Always have. Always will be. He turns to look at a... You got... Saber just turns his... Looks right over his shoulder. I go with him. No. That's good to hear. And he, he looks at Fizzle Spark. You mind? You need me to go with the kid, I'll go with the kid. They need somebody with a head on their shoulders, even if it's yours. <laughs> you know, he, he smiles after saying that. Well, better than yours, I always say. 
<laughs> you know it. <laughs> he taps you on the shoulder, like, you know, showing that camaraderie. And the, the mayor is yeah. just like, he's, he's, he raises his head from the desk once in a while, but he drops it and he seems to be working with papers and writing things and jotting things down. Yeah, and Super uh, Stand moves in right beside him and watches him and everything he's doing. And, yeah. then, and then whispers in his ear, I like, I like your Amarok. He just nods and he keeps working. He's working with a lot of maps. After I send it to Vigo, I point down to the gun and it's told I mean, you still use that fucking clockwork thing. Oh, he's a bad Yeah. Unfortunately, he says a lot of those. And then he taps his sidearm. He goes, eh, it's reliable. Arcane's the way to go, though. Arcane's what got us in this trouble. Usually is. Remember that remember the time the mage cast that black gate? He shifted like looks around. No. So Pantero <laughs> Look, if you got a bead on on where to find Ms. Crane or this sweet tooth. Yeah, I would say gather some info on them before you act. Though you're probably not gonna heed those words. Other than that, stay safe. Information. Find out things. I'll do what I can. If you get into trouble, you've always got Saber over here. It's a bit of a dynamo. He'll mess them up. All right. Good luck to you. You was me all the gods Sabre's above. Bless you, boy. Saber's our leader. I'm, I'm going to follow him for the day. But tomorrow, I'm going to be a leader. <sighs> Ilya's fortune favors the bold. <laughs> That's right, Saber. That's how leaders work. They change off day to day. Yeah, that's only fair, isn't it? Yeah, sure, kid. It's fizzle fuzzle coming, too. Vigo um, nods his head. He's going with it. Okay. Vigo, be too. careful. We leave it now, we leave it tomorrow. Let's go now. Might as well get leaving over with. It's going right. to be hard enough walking away from this place. Might be worse tomorrow. Let's get to it. So if you leave if you leave now, you'll uh, you'll get to the Two Rivers Forest about mid morning. Right? Yeah. I've slept enough. <laughs> you'll get to the um... What am I looking at? Oh yeah, you'll get there about mid morning. Um, you're looking for Belladonna and Sweet Tooth. A quick thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to take, like, like, I don't know how far, how far is the distance between the city and the Two Rivers Forest? The city and the Two Rivers Forest is, it's a little less than a day. A little less than a day's worth of travel. So I'm assuming we're going to take a break at some point. Um, yeah, whatever you want. Because, uh, I have a spare golden coin and figure I'd going to heed some, some of Ego's advice. Oh, okay. So, uh, while we, you know, take a break for just a little bit, uh, I'm going to go try to get in a nice dark part of the woods by myself. All right. And uh, I'm going to use my golden coin to ruse of the fiend's clothing. Okay, as? Belladonna. As Belladonna. Okay. How elaborate is your is your costume of Belladonna? Uh, honestly, I was just going to do the face and keep it hidden under the mask. 
<laughs> All right. So your mask, you know, you you, you you do the build on his face. You get into her character. You, you know, get a little giddy like her. Especially since you spent the most time out of all, any player character uh, with Belladonna. Uh, you get to ask, uh, what is it, three questions? All right. Um, let's see how this goes. All right. So is Belladonna actively involved with the evildoers? Um, what do you mean actively? Like, is she playing the long con and is going to assist them? Yeah, I think... You're talking about, like, uh, Sweet Tooth, or... Uh, See, that, the... that, that's, a, that's a very open-ended question. Uh... I can give you a very open-ended answer. Draven and the rest of them. Not specifically Sweet Tooth. Draven and the rest of them? <laughs> you you basically see her fighting uh, the others. Not Sweet Tooth, but like, you get the vision of Draven, um, the vision of, a, of the lightning hamster, um, and even Moria, right? And you just see, you know, you see them, like, maneuvering and fighting against each other. Uh, <clears throat> Moria charges, uh, like, Moria begins to charge. And then you just see him fall with his eyes rolled back into his, uh, his head. And that's the visions, like, you get for that answer. Okay. So the specific answer is that they're fighting. Okay. Second question. <laughs> Trying to think of a good one. <laughs> Do you want meta assist assistance? <laughs> that would actually be helpful. What? You know what? You know what? How about I take a five minute break. And Go for you it. You guys can cheat all you want, and then I'll find out what happens afterwards when I rewatch this. All right. But you can figure out what questions you want to ask, and I'll be right back. But we'll do all of our messages through Facebook. Whatever. However you want. You want to, you little, you little suckers. Yeah, I'm not going to talk through Facebook. Yeah, I didn't figure that. <laughs> uh, I was, I, that was the one question I knew I needed to ask because. If that was the long con, I needed to know it. Okay, that was a good that was a good question. Um, uh, I was figuring I was gonna try to ask about like her earliest memory. All right, do you know? Do we actually know where they are? Do you yeah, know where they are. Uh, from yeah. everything I've been told, Sweet Tooth specifically is should be in the Two Rivers Forest. Yeah, but, but where do exactly? you know where the Um, I. Do not know exactly where it is. So you can ask that. Ask that. I don't know the third one, but I'm getting a drink. Okay. Ask exactly where the hideout is. I would agree with that. All right. Maybe the third one is: is she safe? Or is she safe? And is she being used to harm people? Yeah, definitely want to ask if she's being used to harm people. Okay. So exactly where? the hideout is and if she's being used to harm people. Yeah. So. so how do you like Bigelow Fizzle Spark? He's like grump. <laughs> what do you think of the finished banner product? Um besides it's a goat drinking a martini. It's just a detail that I can't really get past. <laughs> Because, you know, it's we a goat do, drinking a martini. We, we, we here at Infinite Roleplay do not uh, promote or endorse the consumption of alcohol for any hooved creature. <laughs> Just Fair enough. Know, PSA. 
Like, you can't cut this out. I won't. <laughs> I'm going to expose the evils. I'm going to expose your darkness before all. Now, before you do that, before Brian gets back, I'm going to go, uh, use the restroom. Uh, I wrote it, then. You gotta use the restroom, but go ahead. I'm gonna go make, powder me nose. Make sure, make sure when you powder, you mute your mic. Yeah, I'm gonna mute my mic and hang I, it outside. I, I still hear you. Yeah, it's because I'm talking to you right now. But I'm <laughs> hitting my mic now and taking my headset off. <laughs> so how how's the uh, deciphering of the questions going, Mike? Uh, we got, like, I was just mostly asking if there's any glaringly obvious things that we want to know. It really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting, at this point, getting specifics. Okay. I mean, you're the one asking them, so you're the one getting the answers. You can just ask them now if you want. Um, the second one would be exactly where the hideout is in the Two Rivers Forest. Oh, yeah, you... you... You get, you get the, uh, you know, the encampment, the visions of the encampment, um, other women kind of scowling at you as you're walking through the encampment, but like you remember the paths you take and how to get to, uh, how to get to where Sweet Tooth is at. And then the third one was, uh, is Belladonna being used to hurt people? Yes. Currently? Yes. Belladon is hurting people. You get that vision again with the fight with Moria. When uh, when Moria goes down, his eyes roll in the back of his head. Um, you look back up from his face and you see Moria's soul. So I get a vision of Moria dying. That poor bastard. <laughs> he has just not had any luck. No. And he apparently failed his other roles. I kind of feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I wanted to actually use him to the best of his abilities. Uh, now let's just, for your sake, let's hope that that wasn't an actual vision of the past and instead was a possibility for the future. No, this is not your reading fortunes. I know. For my That's sake, I'm screwed. Vision, though. I'm screwed. That's my sake. I'm screwed. I don't get to use Moria. I don't get to use Killian Freed again. It's just... My bad guys are just... going away. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I really, really hope that Saber does not get levels of insanity. Because <laughs> we do not need an insanity ridden Saber we just going around like saber? a whirling yeah, dervish, cutting down the two rivers forest. And turning it into the two rivers cutting. plains. Cutting down the two rivers forest and cut down everything. <laughs> I can't get dice, but I'm ready to go whenever you guys are. I can still hear you. I'm good. I'm just grab myself something to eat real quick. All right. So with power, Mike. Say what? I don't think it's a transfer in some power. <laughs> All right. What do you, What do you want to do? Considering that's done and the weird ass visions I've got in my head, I'm just going to keep going and uh, on my way to the tours for us. I'm going to read some fortunes. All right, awesome. Um, you read fortunes, and then I'm going to ask for a d20 uh, roll. 
All right. I also slept before we got there. Did, did you guys would... stop to sleep? Yeah, I would have to. to. To rest. I would have to sleep. Unless we don't have the time. What the hell? My fortunes are 14. What? I got 14, 14, and 14. Well, oh, okay. That's unusual. Yeah. And then you need a d20 roll? Swear to God. Could be good. It could be horrible. Uh, you ten. might be stuck on 14. Where, oh, I don't have my character sheet open. Uh, I got, wait, what is that, five, six? Six windows, another character sheet. Um, uh, I have so much stuff. All right, so, an opposed, uh, we're going to need a opposed roll, right? Your perception, your option, Mike, of perception, survival, uh, or, yeah, nothing else makes sense. I'll go perception. Oh, or nature. I'll go perception. Then. All right. That's 18. You got me by one point. Yeah. One. So, you see, um, you, you see, you're noticing, like, things on the floor that they don't look like they belong there. What are they? They're some form of, uh, magic looking ritualistic circle and you spot several of them like in different spots can I pick up a rock and just throw it at one of them um yeah you can nothing happens with the rock they just land in this place keep rolling still gonna try to avoid those I think stepping on them would be a bad. And I'm going to uh, point it out to my traveling companions saying, um, I don't know what those circles do, but they look like bad things. Are they? Are they really bad? Activate uh, my ability to see magic. Um, You activate your ability to see magic? Roll a, a, a constitution check. Oh, great. Constitution check or save? Save, sorry. Okay. Well, it's 16 on the dice. 16? So... Right. That's fine. That That's that's enough. 20. Uh, it There's almost enough magic to actually blind you and sicken you with, like, the rush of what you see. Uh, but you know your 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 body quickly adjusts, um, and it's a it's a high level of of magic. These arcane circles uh, are exuding powerful magics. Don't Try to place the uh, uh, the school. So did our gunslinger just flashbang himself? Almost. Um. You can if you want. I think it's an intelligence check. Right? 17 Arcana. So, oh, son of a gun. Alright, um... You are... You place the uh, spells from being... You place the spells as being of the Belenos school. Fire traps, avoid those. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, 
let's uh i don't want to be set on fire today so let's just move around however i am going to tell everyone not to move to hold my hand out at one and attempt to dispel uh okay i close away Because we're very close to it, Saber is going to step back. Step back. Hopefully not onto another one. <laughs> That's twenty. Uh, what do you need so, to? Twenty-three. To how does your dispel work? Uh, we go to it. Is it okay. is it fifteen it's, plus the the tier ability? Dispel. Range 30 feet. Choose a creature or object or magical effect within range. To attempt to dispel, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. The DC for this check equals 15 plus the spell, spell caster's tailor ability. Yeah, you, uh, you uh, dispel it. Okay. How many are there? Um, with your ability to see magic, you spot eight. Um, but as you as you dispel it um, from an unknown source, oh wow, that's ridiculous! You take one point of force damage from dispelling that thing. <laughs> Are you too disappointed? I am. Oh. Gonna be doing that again. Avoid them. Give yourself a magic paper cut. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, with the ability to see where they are, you know exactly what they are, where they are, and El Pantera, you spotted where they're all at, and and, and Saber, you don't have a clue. Um. No, he doesn't. So he just, he's if, just standing there. If you have evil, evil, oh, evil, God. evil, evil friends pretending, masquerading to be heroes, they might lead you in the wrong direction. Not a dick. All right. Um, walk where we walk, kid. So you managed to get past those uh, those vicious traps. Um. And then you just hear it, right? A big f boom. The ground shakes, and towering over you is a giant striped troll. And he just roars out, Roar! Whoa! And Saber, instead of screaming, Saber just goes, Uh, if my data collection is correct, that's Thud. Yeah, I Thud. Pounds on his chest, boom. Thud, Dragon Eater. What you doing, Thud's forest? Uh, and, uh, and, and Saber thuds his chest and says the giant, I'm Saber. Nice to meet you, Thud. He looks at... Looks at the uh, the wee little one that spoke to him in giant. Replies back, in giant. Good to meet you. It's not safe here. Why are you here? I'm going to respond in giant. Because apparently all of us except for. <laughs> all right. Except for, the, except for the adults in the room. <laughs> <laughs> No, no giant. You oh. just hear you just hear fizzle sparks sigh. Fuck. We're here uh, to see Sweet Tooth. No time. Danger is here. He pounds on his chest again. We are at war. Or with her. Okay. You asked my question. <laughs> oh. 
war with fools. What kind of war is it, Big Thud? Thud not like liars. Liars are fools. Who's lying to you? Somebody want to tell me what the hell y'all saying? To be honest, I don't really know. Oh, yeah, okay. Thud here says that they're war with fools who are lying to them. Who the hell could that thing be at war with? He says they're the liars. Mm. Maybe it's those evildoers. Or uh, if, or it, if that's the evildoers, we're in some trouble. You go. Not safe. And he says that in common so that the, the uh, gnome can understand. That thing looks like it could take out a building. Yaz. <laughs> I'm in character. <laughs> um, I'm fairly certain it could be a building. So how do we ask it? Ask it. How we find a woman? Look. But not here. What? Look, but not here. No, we we need to find someone here. We're looking for someone here. You no know, look here. You go. Then he turns to the kids. He goes, The fuzzy faced one doesn't understand. You must leave. We at war. Well, what if we want to help? Well, a persuasion check. Alright. Since uh, Sieber's understanding, can I. Yeah, you, you could actually you, you could actually give yeah you could help him out. So advantage. Mm -hmm. How do you help him out, Saber? Uh I'm assuming Bambi eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bambi did look pretty tasty. But um, how about instead, I roll a fourteen on it. <laughs> <laughs> because my rolls were a seven and a five. Okay. So with 14 plus some bonuses, what, what do you get? Persuasion. Your persuasion uh, is high. It is. Uh, 21. 21? Um, you see one of the meaty brows that has sort of raised up. It, it, and it's a crooked grin. Like... This creature shouldn't be grinning because it's one of the internal rows of teeth that are clenched and then two of the outer rows of teeth that are open and exposed, you know? And it's really disconcerting. And he just goes... But Saber's just fascinated. He thinks that's amazing. <laughs> so you He's help... Smiling. You help thought. Fight war. Um, but he says that common so that the other one can understand. Who are you at war with? The sky? Fools! Do these fools have names? Uh, not worth. Crush fools. No name I need to. I need to know who the fools are in order to crush them. And then it looks Somebody at the kids. crush random fools? It looks at the kids. Thud, uh, Thud doesn't need to know their names to crush them. I believe it. Thud cares not for their names. Believe that too. Can you tell me what they look like? Looks. 
looks weak. Like you. <laughs> that must be random trees to you. The, the, so the thud actually, uh, he crouches to try to get as low as possible. Which really isn't helping since he's so, like, massive. Um, to talk a little bit better with it. More for the kids than for the gnome. He goes, Ugh. The fools are weak. They make trouble. They hurt Thud's friends. Thud hurt them. Hmm. One has pointy ears. He's saying he's speaking in giant again. Pointy ears. Is that so like an elf? And he says that in giant. He goes, Thud just sort of shrugs. Could be. And, uh, Zebra looks at Alpantera. Is that an elf? I think so. He goes, uh, He has pointy ears like water. Oh! oh. Heroes of Fixton! That sort of nods. Uh, not wow. all of them were liars. Wow! You know the Green Rock! He nods. Little brother. Wow! Um, Thud. So it's like he taps the floor on his way up. He goes, Come, follow me. And then and then he says in, in common. You follow Thud. Okay, big great Thud. And he just he just starts walking somewhere in the woods. Uh, but El Pantera, <laughs> you know that this is one of the like more traveled paths, which I will take. Would one of you like to tell me what the hell was just said? Uh, I think we just got drafted. Seaver is marching right behind Thud like this. He's just marching. <laughs> you know, I'm what? 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 Sound effect of Saber's feet. No. I'm glad Vio got such, you know, strong kids into that hero school of his. But y'all need to let. I'm, I'm here to protect you. Y'all need to let me in on your little plans. We don't need you to protect me, because Saber is awesome. Uh, yeah, if we had a plan there, I would let you in. Oh, so we're flying by the seat of our parents. Nice. I mean, this is just yeah. This this is just like the time me and Vigo and those bugbears. Oh my god. Fizzle fuzz. <laughs> All we just have to do is learn a few more languages. Fizzle spark. Okay, you don't have to read your voice. Look, arguments later. Follow Thud. Let's just keep quiet for now. Just call me Bigelow. Big, big, big low. Okay. As you guys are talking, like there's a uh, your your, your chit chat and your your banter is sort of cut short with the sound of a large fiery explosion that happens a little bit ahead of you, and then a loud thud, a loud grunt from Thud, uh, as you guys notice him consumed by you know a pillar of fire. Um, you guys are, aren't really that close to it, but you can almost, f you feel like you're burning, almost. Like the heat is so intense. Uh, and then it just goes away. There's a bunch of smoke coming off a of thud. And then he just like slaps a tree. Arr! Tree falls over. Like the, the whole trunk of the tree shatters. You know I can warn you where those are. He <laughs> thud looks back. Liars and noise. But he says that in general. Why don't, why don't I take point and I'll warn you where they are? Hmm. You see fire. Yes, I see the traps. Go see fire. I'll take the lead. Just point me in the direction we're going. 
Mm. Don't go this way. Any points? I walk that way. So, you know, periodically, like, looking over you and pointing in another direction and trying to, like, lead you through pointing. Go here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Um, eventually, you guys come to a um, an area where, where he just sort of, like, grabs you, picks you up, puts you behind him. You know? He goes, You wait, thought first. Um, and then he walks, he, he walks, you know, a few steps above. And El Pantera, you're noticing this area. Uh, there's a lot of things that are similar, you know? Like, you're, you could swear this is where the encampment is, but you don't see any encampment. Strange. Um, Thud walks out and goes, Thud bring friends for war. Say hi. Nothing happens, and that just screams out, "Say hi!" <laughs> you know, and um, you just start seeing like shimmers, and a few dozen uh, people, basically like bandits. These guys I didn't are... see any of these guys. Um, did you still have your magic? Oh, you did. Yes. You would. You would have saw a mad. You wouldn't saw the people, but you would have saw like magic in the area. Okay. Sorry about that. I forgot. Um, so they, they become visible and stuff, like, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Until, uh, you finally see, uh, walking, like, in mid-stride, Sweet Tooth. For those of you that, that would recognize Sweet Tooth. He goes, hey, buddy, huh, you, you bring friends. And he goes, oh, Son! When he oh, notices no. El Pantera, <laughs> he runs to you and actually goes to pick you up. Um, though I think your awesome power is higher than his. Yes, so I, I think so. Do, do you allow him to pick you up? Sure. So he, he picks you up, hugs you, and starts spinning you around for like, you know, clumsily dropping you down. And then he pats you on the on the head of your mask. You know, and then, like, pet you almost like you're a cat. <laughs> he goes, oh, oh, man, we had to get out of there quick. I'm, I'm, oh, I didn't, I didn't want to leave you behind, but I thought you would have been safer. You know, we drew the, uh, we drew those guys over to, to your, your old pop's place over here. And, uh, have a couple of buddies. Um, and then he walks, he walks over to Thud. And he goes, Thud, I forgot to tell you. Tapping, you know, on his side. Like, he's not afraid of him at all. He's very friendly with him. He goes, you're an uncle! I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look uh, up at Thud. Um, I just look at you and then and in Nomer say, you're his son? <laughs> <laughs> um, he looks, uh, Sweet Tooth looks back at and Bay uh, turns right and says, Is that your dad? Uh, he... Sweet Tooth looks at um, Fizzle Spark and just goes, Yeah, why do you think he has to hide all that beauty behind the mask? I know how it is. I was younger once. I couldn't get the ladies off of me. Damn it. He understands no mission. Was... Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I don't discriminate. And he starts, like, you know, moving his clothing around like he's adjusting something. And he's like, look, uh, you didn't... Hey, big guy. Oh, did you walk into one of those traps again? Oh, boy. I think he's okay. That, that, uh, that Draven, whoo, he's, uh, he's a pretty nasty fella. So, uh, Draven's out here? Yeah, he's, uh, he's hiding out in the woods. 
old uh, Thud here, and uh, I got another friend. Woo. They gave him a good working over. Made him think twice about a frontal assault, huh? And, and he starts tapping. Yeah. Oh, bad guys from the set, he's coming over here. And they're warring with you? He taps El Pantera on the shoulder. He goes, not bad for you, old man, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, pretty good, I'd, I'd say. He goes, come here, let me tell you a secret. Uh, and, like, he squats down to, to whisper to you. He's like, I'll tell you what. I don't know how, how we lasted so long against that son of a bitch, but give it a one, too, huh? Father and son team. Yeah, I think that'll work. Nelson. Would it be possible to let one of my polter guys speak through me? Um. Yeah. I, I look at uh. Look at El Pantera since he seems to know all these languages, and I open my mouth and all these whispers just begin to come out. Can you understand what I'm saying? Is is literally what I say in Ether Talk? I got none. <laughs> He goes, hey, hey, hey. It's a sweet tooth. Hey. None of that here, okay? Oh my god, his spirit's gonna come alive and all those creatures are coming out. Look, we got we got some people sensitive to that. You show some respect. I mean, come on. I mean You wonders. You understood that? He starts scratching his neck. Ah, well, I know I know where it comes from. It's, it's a sensitive subject around here lately. Oh my god! <laughs> what do you look so surprised for? You were the one talking it. Pantera. And and that seabird. Pulls the side of his uh, Alpine Terrors, you know, out of, nudges them on the arm. Are we helping him now? Yeah, kid, I think we need to talk in private. Hey, hey, keep your pants on there, little voicey voice guy. I haven't seen my son in a, too long, too long. They got a lot of catching oh. up to do. The name is Bigelow Fizzle Spark. All right, Fizzy Wiz. Well, uh, hey, Miranda. <laughs> Sweetie, come here. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, show him to a tent, let him unwind for a bit. Give him once over, uh, not that kind. Oh, no, let him know what's going on, yeah. <laughs> and then he puts his arm, like, around uh, El Pantero. He goes, come on, son. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to your aunties. And then he whispers in your ears, and you let me know if any of them looks like your mama. I. So he just starts walking off with El Pantero. And just some bandit woman. Come. Some bandit woman comes to uh to Fizzle Spark and Saber. And says, um, just you know, come on, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> this time I open my mouth and I'm not actually speaking, Faye. One of my poltergeist says, or could it? Could they do that? No, they, uh, poltergeists, like 99% of the time, um, any geist will speak in ether talk. It's the language of okay. ghosts. Because I only have one bonus language and I took that for ether talk. But, um, yeah. They so, open no... Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> just here, it just goes in no mesh. What are you trying to say? I, I look at the girl and speak in no mesh. Can you understand us? Um, she was just... 
Just give me a minute. We'll we'll go over it in a, in the tent. Okay. Did she say whether she could understand us or not? That's how she responds to you. Oh. I kind of oh, lean yeah. over, put my put my arm over Saber, and whisper in his ear, Gnomish. How are we gonna? How are we gonna arrest Sweet Tooth? I don't know. I think I think we're in their same side now. I'm a bit confused. But we're here to we're here to do what constables do. We're here to arrest him, right? No, I, uh, nobody told me everything. But aren't you a deputy? Did you say Vigo made you a deputy? Oh, uh, that was when I was here before. But that well, was a one time. Once you're once you're made a deputy, you can't unbe a deputy. Oh, is that right? I didn't know that. That's amazing. <laughs> so that means you're a constable, which means we have a job to do. Oh, I don't know. Oh, right. So then, as you guys walk into this tent, like, there's, there's bandits everywhere, right? Like, and they're, you know, you can tell these guys are obviously bandits. You know, there's every telltale sign, right? There's the big muscle guy that has the sleeveless leather armor. There's the shifty little skinny guys with bows and arrows. And, and there's a really odd, um, like... This is almost like equal opportunity. Um, if anything, the the women might actually outnumber the men in this place, right? Um, so you go to one of these tents. There's a fairly large tent. There's a lot of you know bandits inside, uh, and then you you see her casting a spell, um, and then she sits down to talk to you guys, and then we screen wipe over back to Sweet Tooth and El Pantera. Who are in this, like, pavilion. Right? Like, this is a enormous... You walk into this tent. It's like tent has sections and curtained off rooms. And, like, a large, you know, like, almost a throne-like chair. And then it's a big section with, like, dozens and dozens of throw pillows. And as you guys walk in there... Uh, there's about a half dozen of the female bandits with you. And when you walk in, they just go right to the throw pillows and kind of like lay down on them. And uh, when they do that, Sweet Tooth turns to look look at you and raise an eyebrow. He goes, <laughs> not bad for you, old man. Uh. I just, I say goddamn in Sylvan. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I know, right? So, uh... <laughs> Um, yeah, so, it's, all right, uh, let me give you the, give you the fun down. I, I made, I made, I made a deal with your buddies, right? You know, your old man, he's a man of his way. And, uh, that bastard kind of came over here. He's coming, coming a bit loud, and uh, he's been pushing us. But uh, we've been pushing back, and uh, and then you hear, ah! um, as Belladonna comes out from like a curtained area, and uh, Sweet Tooth goes, sweetheart, hey, and as soon as he says it. You can, like, the, the jealousy becomes palpable in the room. And you just notice all the scowling and, like, the... <laughs> like, the cat fight in all the other women. It's it's ridiculous. Right? It's just horrible. And Belladonna runs over to, um... To, uh, El Pantera and just gives him a hug. I'll hug back. I'm, like... Two and a half feet shorter than her, so it's You're probably more than two and a half feet shorter than her. She's taller than Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not like I could really, you know, let go of the hug and fall back to the floor, but I'll hug anyway. So um <laughs> So He goes, 
Uh, yeah, family reunion. This is, this is wonderful. Uh, but yeah, back to business. But we managed to, to put a hurting on him. We got that, uh, what's his name? His pet kitty cat. That's just what he does. He goes, so it was right. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he doesn't want to mess around with your old man and his friends. Friends and family, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah, see, uh, your Uncle Thud over here, uh, but he's not in the tent, he says over here. Well, the nice part is you can just point in the general direction, and there's a good chance Thud's going to be somewhere in that area. <laughs> he goes, yeah, uh, him and uh, Grimrock have been patrolling the perimeter, keeping an eye out. Good guys. Should get to know him. Yeah, they seem like uh, seem they're, like good friends to have. It was a bit rough and tumble, you know, but uh, it is what it is. So you're you're surviving out here with with these guys on a constant frontal assault? Because oh, you know, yo, man, I do a lot more than survive. And then he kind of like he doesn't turn his head away from you but he shifts his eyes towards where all the throw pillows and bandit women are you know uh and then he just stares at you waiting for confirmation uh i guess uh i guess i should probably go see if uh my traveling companions are caught up to speed um He's like, yeah, yeah. We got a lot to catch up on, you know. I, like I said before, I mean, and then he sits. He's on his chair and he's like sprawling out. He's like, ah, oh, I wasn't as comfortable as the last time we had a chance to talk. But uh, we got a lot to catch up on. It's not like I knew you were around. You know, don't get me wrong. If I knew, we'd be in a different story sure of it but uh yeah and then like belladonna straight cuts him off and she goes oh look look and she like takes a couple of steps um just in the middle of the tent and actually goes upside down to do a handstand uh you know her, her dress kind of like slips down a bit she's wiggling her feet in the air and she's just staring at el pantera just grinning her grin's literally upside down because she's upside down but she's just grinning. I'm just going to applaud her. You finally got it. You're doing it. And so is all, all the women on the, the throw pillows. They're applauding too. Um, but their, their applause is like. <laughs> very lackluster. I can feel the venom from here. <laughs> so um, he goes, yeah. Also, uh, a little buddy, you know. Come and, come and see your dad. Don't be a stranger. Hey, go with your friends. Have a little talk. Maybe we can work something out. You can uh, get your other buddies from the ship. Uh, I don't know if they caught back yet, but... You know. It'd help. That, uh, that Draven guy... He's, uh, I'll see what I can do. Taking a bit of your, your, he's taking a bit of your family's comfort away. Not a nice fella. Yeah, didn't figure as much. I'll see what I can do. And he gets up from his chair, like goes over to you and starts rubbing you on the head. You know, like it's a, it, it's an endearing thing, but it's for you exceptionally awkward. Just keep smiling and walk out the door <laughs> as soon as that's done. Um, and then, as you walk out, you, you just catch the eye, uh, Sweet Tooth, like, hugs Belladonna, and gives her, like, a, a peck on the cheek. Um, and they walk towards his chair. 
So as we wipe back over, like you walk out and you see nothing. Everything's gone again. And then we wipe back out into the tent um, with all the bandits and your allies, Saber and, and Fizzle Spark. And uh, the bandit woman goes, and that's when they retreated. So do you have everything? All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we got everything. Uh, one of the other bandits goes, good. Don't make her repeat herself. It's one of the bigger dudes. She's nice. Look, just keep an eye out. That elven fellow ain't no joke. And the oh, other he's guys a are, wizard. The other guys start like, you know, punching him in the shoulder. Ah, please, we got thud. Oh, and did you see the boss's new girl? Woo! I don't think she's much of a joke either. Somebody else, and uh, like the women are kind of like at that notion. You just see like the the color sort of wash from their faces and all their eyes just their brows lower a bit. And and then one of the other guys goes, Ooh, "Yeah, and Melissa. Ooh, she's on a war path herself now." Um. And as, as he says that, like, uh, stumbling into the tent, kind of unaware whether unaware of what, whether or not this was the correct tent, um, Phil. is El Don't. Pantera. It's probably like the third or fourth tent he's checked. Melissa? What? <laughs> no, El Pantera is the one that falls in. Yeah, we said... Okay, I'll ask later. <laughs> Just gonna, you know, scratch the back of my head. That happened. Yeah, that happened, kid. You know, is everyone else still here? I mean, I don't think anybody left. Yeah, nobody left. Nobody left. Bonds were all around us. You think we could speak to you in private, kid? Uh, sure. I just don't know if there's a spare tent or something. Didn't. Wouldn't figure there would be. Y'all mind leaving us alone with your leader's son? Yeah. We do. We can just stand outside. Yeah, you can do that. Go on ahead. I ain't gonna stop you. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna walk outside that. the tent. Yeah, let's do that. We outside. I, I once again slip into no mission. This time, leaning against El Pantera. You know, we got to arrest all these people, right? I don't know if we can. But they got Thud. And I didn't want to help Thud because he's cool. They're all criminals. Yeah, and they're okay, fighting other criminals. So we arrest everybody. You want to try to put handcuffs on Draven Denholm? I'm going to need a lot more shackles. <laughs> <laughs> I think with that, like, as he says, I'm going to need a lot more shackles. We'll fade the camera to black as, like, the text, Into the Woods. You know, the title of the episode bleeds over. And then, like, as Into the Woods fades away, rising up in the credits, Hero School. Special episode. <laughs> The Port of El Pantera, played by Mike. You know, it does, so on and so forth. 